Happy Walk by Faith Wednesday. Today, we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit, and you don't want to miss it. So please join me. Welcome to The Bold Encourager. I'm Rebecca. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you're new to my channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything. It just allows for me to get my positive, encouraging messages out to, to everyone. So today we are talking about the fruit of the Spirit as we continue on It's All About Our Character series. Uh, yeah, we're almost to the end of this. Uh, next week will be the last episode of the series and we'll start on a new series uh, starting in June. So it's very exciting. But let's go ahead and get into prayer and let's get this started. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the fruit of the Spirit. Lord, I just pray that we go about our days and that we just be a light to the world and really let the, whole, the fruit of the Spirit reign in us, that we are an example to those that are hurting, that are lost, Lord Father. I pray that we will see them the way you see them, that we will give reverence to you by being true vessels of love and compassion, Lord Father. I pray that we really do let your Spirit reign in us to where we are able to draw people nearer and nearer to you, to bring more and more people into your kingdom, Lord Father. I pray that people are touched by this message. I pray that the Holy Spirit works in them and really helps them understand what it is to have the fruit of the Spirit in their hearts, their minds, their lives, Lord Father. I pray that something changes within them today, Lord Father, that they really do seek you first in your kingdom and your righteousness and all these things will be added to them. And so I thank you for these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, thank you so much. I know that it gets really busy during the summer, so I do appreciate you coming on here and watching my videos for Wednesday. I know that it can be hard to do that. So whoever is watching, thank you so much. Um, let's go ahead and get into it. Galatians 5, 22 through 23 NLT. So this is the verse about the fruit of the Spirit. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, pay, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. And the other verse that I like that goes in my mind with this is Romans 8.14 NLT. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. So what we're seeing here, this is a daily life thing. This is a daily life thing where we allow the fruit of the Spirit to reflect God's character. And we should let God's character be reflected in our lives and how we act. Uh, and the only way we can do that is we, as we partner with the Holy Spirit and allow Him to change us through the fruit of the Spirit. There's got to be a transformation in us. It doesn't come just naturally. It's a, having time with the Lord and being in His presence to really let it soak in the fruit of the Spirit. we got to allow the Holy Spirit to do a good work in us so that we can represent Christ in the right way. Because all these characteristics that we're explaining are things that Christ is displayed in His life. And so we have to be those representatives, even when it's hard, right? <laughs> so the first um, and as you know, fruit of the Spirit, it's not fruits of the Spirit because they all go together. But the first characteristic of the fruit of the Spirit is love. And so when we look at each individual and you're like, well, I don't have this or I don't have that. Remember that it comes as a package deal. When you allow the Holy Spirit to come in you and really do that work in the fruit of the Spirit, He will give you all these characteristics in one. And they kind of go together. If you think about it, you can't have love without patience. You can't have um, self-control without goodness. So they all, when you look at them all together or in, even, even individually, you're like, wait, joy can't come without peace. So when you put them all, they all intertwine together. They're not just one fruit at, at separated and that we just, okay, well, I want that one. I want this. And we can't just pick and choose. They all come together, right? So First one, love. 
Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It is not irritable, and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7, NLT. Love is probably the most important characteristic of God. And it's mentioned first here. Because love is that commandment that God says, love God with all your heart, all your mind and soul, and then love your neighbor as yourself. Love is a commandment. So, the love in these verses, though, are describing agape love. Agape love is not simply, I love ice cream or I love cookies, right? It's more than that. A lot of times we use love kind of sparingly and say it for everything. I love this. I love that. But we don't often say it in the context of agape love. So when you truly love someone with agape love, you're expressing a self, a selfless, sacrificial and unconditional love. The love of God needs to be expressed through us to reach others. We need to express agape love, not the kind of love that's un that's conditional, right? And that is a hard thing to do because we as human beings have conditions to love. We don't just love people with out condition. We, well, I love you when you're like this, or I love you when you treat me better or that and this and that. That that's not the love that God is talking about. Because there are people that often hate God and God still loves them. And so that is the distinct difference between just love and agape love. So we need to have this kind of love to reach others. And the fruit of his love grows and blossoms in our hearts so we can reach those that are hurting, broken, deceived and hopeless and love is like I said a command it's not a suggestion we must love others the way God loves us and loves them so one thing that I've been working on in the garden in our backyard I should say there's not much of a garden right now it's um we have been trying to get rid of these weeds and I noticed as I was going around pulling these weeds and my husband's been doing the hula ho, um, it's nearly impossible to get ahead of them because they're just so crazy. And I wish I would have known about the weed preventer. <laughs> but um, my mom and my friend told me about it. And so now I'm like, okay, next year, next year I'm going to do the weed preventer. But what I see is the weed preventer is the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, right? So he prevents the weeds in our life. Because what happens is, what I noticed about where the weeds were growing was in the hardened ground. Just as when our heart is hardened, we are hardened to God, and we don't allow for God to let things grow in our life spiritually. So then we allow those things that are not so good to grow in our lives when we, we harden our hearts to God. And harden our hearts does not allow us to have the fruit of the Spirit, right? So also... The hardened hearts prevent us from hearing and seeing the truth. So we are spiritually blind and we are also spiritually deaf when we harden our hearts. So the only way that God can really do a good work in us is when we allow for him to, when we're vulnerable with him, when we allow for him to do the work in us, when we allow him to really let his fruit of the spirit work in us. So that's where I was like, the weed preventer is the fruit of the spirit because he, we're going to be fruitful and grow good fruit when we allow the Holy Spirit to, to produce this fruit in us. But when we don't, we see the weeds and it's because our hearts have hardened ourselves, have hardened, hardened us and we, we cannot allow for the good work that God can do in us. And so now this is where we, we get into everything. And I just thought that was such a good analogy to explain to you. And I myself, I'm a very sensitive soul, a very sensitive spirit. And I, I always thought that was a weakness, but I have found that because I am sensitive and vulnerable to God and have always had this really soft heart, 
God has done so much work in me because I've allowed him to, I haven't hardened my heart to him. And that's been life changing. So then we move on to joy. So Romans 15, 13 ESV made the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you abound in hope. Psalm 1611 ESV. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. So joy is not the same as happiness. Actually, we will experience sorrow, but we find joy in sorrow. Joy is the product of of hope that we get from God, and He helps us face all the sorrows in our life. So joy allows for us to get through those sorrows unscathed because of the blessing that we get from God. Jesus was full of joy through the Holy Spirit, and that's what we need. We need Jesus' joy, even in adversity. So when you're going through things, you might you might not smile. That's fine. Like You don't want a fake smile. Joy is not about happiness. It's not about smiling a fake smile. It's more about just experiencing the joy of God, and people don't understand it. They're like, wait a minute, why are you so joyful? You're going through so much and yet you're still joyful because joy is like closely connected to living in God's presence. We cannot have the joy of the Lord without living in his presence, without having time with him. So we got to focus on Jesus in difficult circumstances and live by faith so that we can experience this wonderful joy that comes from the Holy Spirit, right? And so then we move on to peace. Who doesn't want peace, right? (laughs) Like I said, how can you experience peace without joy? So Philippians 4, 6 through 7 NLT. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5, 1 NLT. And you become imitators of us and of the Lord, for you have received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit. 1 Thessalonians 1, 6 ESV. So this is um, some really great verses to remind us that God's peace is so much better than worldly peace. Worldly peace is very short-lived. Hey, you'll be going on vacation, seems fun, and you're like, that's nice, but then you still come back and you're like, there's a mess in the house, there's so much going on. So it's short-lived. You don't get that permanent feeling of peace from the world. But peace from God is long-term and everlasting because God offers a peace only that can come from him. And it also brings others to peace when they're around us because they see the peace of God in us. Grace and peace are actually closely related. It's by Jesus dying on the cross that we receive peace because our relationship with God is restored. When we feel separated from God, when we have fallen away from God, we don't experience peace because We are missing out. We're missing out on the love of God because we don't have Jesus in our heart. And so in order for us to experience peace like no other, the peace that no one understands, you got to have Jesus. And Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And it is through him that we have that peace. And so we move on to patience. (laughs) My favorite topic. (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) Patience was always the hardest one for me. (laughs) God still works on me every once in a while when it comes to patience, but I think everybody can agree this is a hard one. (laughs) But hey, you cannot be full of love without patience, right? So Ecclesiastes 7, 8, NLT. Finishing is better than starting. Patience is better than pride. Uh, James 5, 7, NLT. Dear brothers and sisters, be patient as you wait for the Lord's return. Consider the farmers who patiently waited for the rains in the fall and in the spring. They eagerly look for the valuable harvest to ripen. Second Peter 3, 8 through 9, the message. Don't overlook the obvious here. 
friends, with God, one day is good as a thousand years, a thousand years as a day. God isn't late with his promise as some measure lateness. He is restraining himself on account of you holding back the end because he doesn't want anyone lost. He's giving everyone space and time to change. Yes, I know. <laughs> You're like, I don't care about all that guy. Just come back now. <laughs> But we need to have patience with all people, regardless of what sin they struggle with. Everybody struggles with something. A lot of times we look at, oh, that sin's worse than the other one. That sin's worse, this sin, whatever. No, they're all the same. They're all the same in God's eyes. So we have to have patience with people as they struggle through the hardship. And we've been there too. Like we've all been there. We've all had this situation and God has, has, paid, has had patience with us. So we shouldn't be passing judgment on other people because Jesus laid down his life for everyone, no matter who they are. And sometimes we're impatient with God. We're like, God, when is that promise going to be fulfilled? God, when are you coming back? God, this, God, that, right? What we get impatient with God and his timing. We're like, I've been praying for this whole situation, God, for a long time. When's this going to be resolved? You got to trust God in his timing. As you have seen in the past and I have seen in my life, his timing is perfect because we can't see it all and we think we know it all, but we don't. So when we are patient on his timing, it shows God that we are faithful too, right? And so God is patient with us. So we need to be patient with him and others too. That's right. <laughs> Patience is this restraint of anger and the flesh is easily anger, but then later regrets what it said, you said, right? You say something in anger and you can't take it back. That person's hurt for whatever time frame because you said something really hurtful. And it's really hard to heal from words. We had that whole thing about the tongue, but, um, or that series about the tongue. But anyways, without patience from spirit, the spirit, we are easily angered with others and ourselves. So it's not just others, but even ourselves. We get angry at ourselves because we're like, well, I can't believe you did that again. I can't believe. And so you have to have illustrate this patience that comes from the Holy Spirit and it gives you patience for everyone. God, for pe other people and also for yourself. And I mean, I can tell you from working in client services, it requires patience. And people can get angry. Some people are needy and all this stuff. But when I've learned how to respond and how to show this fruit of patience, it has changed me for good. And it's been a struggle. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it's been tough. But God's the patience that God gives us will help. It actually really helps our character. Patience is one of those character characteristics that you want in your life because it will change you for the better and it is really good for your heart so then um we talk we're talking about kindness now so proverbs eleven seventeen 17 nlt your kindness will reward you but your cruelty will destroy you titus 3 3 5 through 5 esv for we ourselves were once foolish disobedient led astray slaves to various passions and pleasures passing our days in malice and envy hated by others and hating one another. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. We've all been there. We've all been there. And we need to illustrate kindness to people because we know what it is to be in that place where we've been when we were in not in such great condition and God just cleaned us up and made us look pretty spiritually. Right? So we need to show kindness. Unkind people cannot preach the gospel because guess what? You look like a scam. If you're going out there and you're preaching the gospel and you're sharing the word of God, but then you go out and you're honking at someone, getting angry when you're <laughs> driving your car, uh, road raging it, or you just came from church, you're road raging or something to that matter, or you're, you know, you push in front of a person at, at, at CVS or whatever store you're at, you are not showing kindness. And that makes you look like a scam if you proclaim that you're 
all about Christ, right? So it would be a scam to do that. And God lavishes us with kindness so we can be a light to others. So we got to clove ourselves with kindness. And we got and we don't even have to say a word when we're kind. It's a testimony to be kind without words. And that's what that's wonderful. Like if you just became you came your presence and you're just kind to everyone and they just saw that they're like who's she? She is like really kind. That's a testimony. And you don't even have to say anything. And God's grace and mercy is shown in his kindness. So it's important for us to show kindness to others so we can reveal God's mercy and his grace to others through the kindness of God, right? Through the kindness of the spirit, through of the spirit. It's a very important, all of them are important traits, right? So the next one is goodness. Psalm 23, 6 ESV. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Psalm 23, 6 ESV. Trust in the Lord and do good, then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Psalm 37, 3 NLT. So we keep praying, we keep on praying for you, asking our God to enable you to live a life worthy of this call. May he give you the power to accomplish all good things your faith prompts you to do. 2 Thessalonians 1.11 NLT So goodness starts with God. Goodness starts with God because God is good, right? And um, we cannot do it on our own. We must partner with God to display goodness. Goodness is intentional, so it mu we must resist evil to do good. God's goodness shines like a bright light where darkness is. That's how bright his goodness is. And also, it's a beacon of hope to show God's goodness. So goodness means like straining yourself, draining yourself of what benefits you and do what benefits others. So you put others first. And also, goodness is displayed in our actions and the way we behave. And it lets us overcome evil and display goodness of God in our lives. So goodness is really just doing the works of God, doing good things for others, um, having that serving heart, but you know, knowing that you can't do it without God because you can't be good without God. And that's, that's the truth. <laughs> so the faithfulness is the next one. 2 Corinthians 1 17 through 19 message version. Are you now going to accuse me of flip-flopping with my promises because it didn't work out? Do you think I talk out of both sides of my mouth? A glib yes one moment, a glib no the next? Well, you're wrong. I try to be as true to my word as God is to his. Our word to you wasn't a careless yes canceled by an indifferent no. How could it be? When Silas and Timothy and I proclaimed, the Son of God among you did pick up on any yes and no, an on again and off again, waffle, waffling. Was it a clean, strong yes? And then 1 Peter 4.19 NLT. So if you are suffering in a manner that pleases God, keep on doing what is right. And trust your lives to the God who created you, for he will never fail you. Faithfulness is something we need to be doing every day and for how we live our lives in prayer because we must remember God is always faithful and so we too can't be wishy-washy we can't be like oh yes I feel like doing this oh no I'll be that yes we got to be faithful in what we're saying we're doing we got to do it in a manner that pleases God. We need to be faithful in persecution. I mean, let's be real. We ain't, we ain't facing persecution like some of the other countries. But it there are things that we do get persecuted in. And the way that we're treated because we're Christians. We, we're not dying, but we are getting persecuted in the way that we are not accepted. And that is hard for us as people that do most of the time look for the approval of others. But we have to be like Jesus in that sense, right? And then God's faithfulness is planted in our hearts so that we have this through the, whole, the fruit of the Spirit. 
the fruit of the, this fruit of the spirit, this faithfulness, is actually a combination of God's steadfastness, his fidelity, his loyalty. So we want to have that illustrated in who we are. We want to be loyal people. We want to say what we do and, and live by action. Me and my mom were talking about, sometimes it drives us crazy when people say, I'm going to do this. I promise I'm going to do that and I'm going to do this. And then they take it back and they never do it, right? So then it makes you feel like, do I trust this person? Can I trust this person? God delivers what he's going to say he's going to do. And he, he delivers on his promises. He's faithful. He doesn't change his mind. Yeah, sometimes it takes longer than we like, but he always delivers and we've always seen it happen. But our faithfulness is not always the same. Like sometimes we don't deliver what we, we say we're going to do for God. And that means that we're not showing that faithfulness of the fruit of the Spirit. So we, ha we have to take responsibility for God-given tasks. God's assigning things to us. If we're not taking responsibility for it, we're not being faithful. And also... We want to get to the very end and say, God to say, good and faithful servant, right? So we need, it's not that we earn our way into heaven, but we want to be faithful to God. We want to show him we care. We That's how we drive in and have that relationship with him and that closeness with him. So we, we actually get a lot more from his relationship by being faithful, by doing these things, because it it just draws us and makes a better character for us. So that's why it's so wonderful to be a part of that. And so gentleness is the next one. Titus 3, 2, NLT. They must not slander anyone and must avoid quarreling. Instead, they should be gentle and show true humility to everyone. 2 Timothy 2, 25, 26, NLT. Gently instruct those who oppose the truth. Perhaps God will change those people's hearts and they will learn the truth. Then they will come to their senses and escape from the devil's trap, for they have been held captive to him to do whatever he wants. Galatians 6, 1 NLT Dear brothers and sisters, if anyone is a believer overcome by sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back into the right path and be careful not to fall into the same same temptation yourself. Gentleness, yes. It, it's just... It's not just being soft. You're like, oh, be a softy. That's what it's saying. No, gentleness is more than that. Gentleness is like actually overcoming vengeance. And it just demonstrates this control you have over your emotions. It helps you fight against aggressiveness. It helps you remain calm and deliver this like well thought off, thought, like thoughtful, truthful and loving response to a wounded person. And it's wisdom. And that way you're not wounding somebody in the mix of everything. You're expe we're expected. We are expected to be gentle as Christians. It's what we're supposed to do. It's We're supposed to help heal others, not wound them. And I know there's some people that take things a little too far. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about that you look to be gentle with people. You allow the Spirit to speak for you instead of you saying your own words. Let the Spirit speak for you. Be gentle with people because you never know what battle they're fighting. And so, um, as we know, when we have a gentle answer to wrath, it actually makes wrath go away. It, it calms a person that's angry down. That, that actually deters the wrath. And so, it is a, a really great way to respond. And I've experienced it at work myself. Somebody could be angry at you know, my company, which is very often, and they're going off on me and I just gently respond and they eventually calm down. And that's, that is the best way to respond to people. So gentle response is always a good way to turn away wrath. And when we see a fellow believer who's caught in transgression, who's caught in sin, we are to confront them, but we're supposed to do it loving and gently. You don't want to come at them and be like, hey, I know what you did. <laughs> no. <laughs> don't be a star and accuse them because that is not going to help them go back to God. That's not going to help them see what they did was wrong. It's more going to just make them embarrassed and shameful and actually run from God. So the best way to is say, hey, I you noticed some things that have changed in you and I just want to reach out and let you know I care. And that says a lot about your character. So it's, it's gentleness is like this measure of God's identity to reach the wounded world around us. And God is transforming us into the image of Jesus, 
who is, by the way, gentle and humble in heart. He sought to do the gentle way. And yeah, there was times where he called out the hypocrites, but that's different from the sinners. The hypocrites were people who proclaimed to be, you know, all about God, but then they actually weren't, you know, and their hearts were wicked. And so he held them in a higher regard because they knew the word of God, but yet they were not very kind and they actually were more about the way they looked than their hearts. So then last one, self-control. Definitely another one I struggled with. Proverbs 25, 28, NLT. A person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. 2 Timothy 1, 7, ESV. For God gave us a spirit that's not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. And so Galatians 5, 16, NLT. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives, then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. Self-control is this restraint that releases us from temptation. Self-control helps us not to be tempted by the worldly desires and resist the temptations of the devil. It is actually essential in our Christian walk because it protects us from the works of the flesh. So if you find that you have a struggle with, um, you you maybe have a struggle with drinking and you're, you're alcoholic, you, you don't want to go to a bar, right? So you, you kind of restrain yourself from things that are worldly desires that will get you into temptation. So self-control is something that the fruit of the spirit can help you with. Like if you struggle with um, a shopaholic or anything that you struggle with because it's a worldly desire, it may also take your attention away from God. So in those kind of senses, it's good to have self-control. And I, I was, because I was a people pleaser before I did struggle with that. And I was trying to always make the other people happy. So that was a worldly desire of mine. And I learned that that doesn't work when you're trying to live for God. So thankfully the fruit of the spirit has worked itself in me. It's helped me with the really tough ones, patience and self-control. The other ones, they do go well with it. And so they were not as much of a struggle, but they do still go well together. So I, I've learned that we want it as a package deal. We want it all. And so we really, truly want to do, we want to partner with God and to be better at what we do. So if you've come on here and you haven't gotten saved, but you really want that relationship with God, I'm inviting you in with this prayer, dear friend. Let's say it together. Uh, um, dear Father God, I know I'm a sinner. I confess with my mouth that I believe Jesus Christ shed his blood on the cross and died for my sins. Forgive me now and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I accept Jesus Christ as your as the Lord and Savior in my life. I turn my life over to you, dear Lord, and thank you for this gift of salvation. Help me to lead a life that is pleasing to you from this day forward. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Let's close out in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for the fruit of the Spirit. I pray that as we go about our week that we remember and let the Holy Spirit work in us and keep us where we need to be kept. Keep us living the life and being a light to others. May we just shine so bright and bring about the fruit that's so juicy and so delicious to you, Lord Father. May we just be a radiant just fruitful, have radiant, fruitful lives that just bless you and glorify you, Lord God. I just pray we wake up every morning with a heart of God, with that heart and mind of God that we were on fire for you, that we want to show the true fruit of the Spirit in everything we do. And then people start asking what you got going on. I want that too. So Lord, I just pray that we bring in the storehouse and we fill up your harvest and we make everybody understand who you truly are by living the life that is really represents you and your character. So I thank you for these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It helps me a lot. You can go ahead and subscribe, comment, um, share, like, and it doesn't cost you anything. It just helps me out. <laughs> also, if you haven't followed me on social media, please follow me on social media. The links will be down below. And if you haven't hit that notification bell, please hit that notification bell. So it will let you know every time I post a new video, I have Wednesday videos for these, um, Wednesday, walk by faith, walk by Wednesday, walk by faith Wednesdays. 
sorry. <laughs> um, but also other videos and you don't want to miss any of them. So hit that notification bell. Well, I hope you have an amazing day and I hope you stay encouraged.